she said, like she said so many times before, she said, I don't think I'm going to see you again. I said, yes, you will. We'll see each other again. And I put my hand in the door to leave. Very, very difficult leaving. I put my hand in the door to leave. And she said, I'll see you tomorrow, honey. And that moment for me galvanized my spiritual and my professional and personal mission. It made me realize that a, something that we treat is an inevitable part of aging, dementia, something that we highly stigmatize, something that we're highly scared of, is not something that we need to be in any of those formats. It's a disease. Dementia is a disease, not an inevitable part of aging. And that's what I'm here to talk with you about today. But most importantly, when you walk out of these TED Talks today, what I want you to remember is one simple but very, very powerful idea of something that you can do to help prevent and intervene in this disease. That you can take that memory of that person that you hold incredibly dear to you and you can say, that does not have to happen to my loved one or to me. So one of the main things of getting rid of any disease is clearing our fear of it. We are not scared of cancer. We know too much about it. We're not scared of heart disease because we know what we can do to help prevent it. We should not be scared of dementia because I'm here to tell you that there are very simple things that we can do to help prevent this disease. So like our skin, everything decays, everything wears away. And when you think about your skin, you can think about your brain the same way. Your brain shrinks. When we get into our 50s and 60s, your brain starts shrinking at a very small, imperceptible rate, and that's normal. So don't freak out. That's normal, right? So if you're in your 50s and 60s, your brain's shrinking right now. No. Slowly, very slowly. In all life atrophies, but in the brain, on the top, you see a normal brain. Then you see it start decaying. But what happens in Alzheimer's dementia or any other form of dementia is this brain starts accelerating quickly. Right? Like when I'm trying to find a sparking, parking spot in the morning at GCU. Okay? It accelerates quickly and it gets to the point where it's one-third the size of a normal brain at death. That is the commonality across all different forms of dementia. So when you look at a healthy brain in somebody with severe Alzheimer's dementia, it's one-third of the size. People say, John, is Alzheimer's dementia the same thing as just dementia in general? Yes, it's just like a form of dementia. So Alzheimer's and dementia, just a type. So these are things that are supposed facts, but are actually not facts. So dementia is a natural part of aging. This is something we take as fact, and that is not true. Two, there is no way that you can prevent dementia. That's untrue. And the biggest myth among them all is that simply keeping your brain active will help prevent dementia, and that is definitely not true. Simply keeping your brain active will not do it. In fact, it does very little or nothing as you age. And I'll tell you what you can do that will be helpful. And three, once you have dementia, there is nothing you can do about it. These are myths. These are some of our wildest held cultural myths in medicine in general. For a pandemic level disorder, this is absurd. We know way too much in science, especially here in Phoenix. 600 1,000 people have diagnosis of dementia each year in the United States. This number is expected to be double that, considering how many undiagnosed cases there are out there. Globally, there's 60 million people that have dementia. So to take nothing away from cancer, heart disease, any other major top 10 medical disorder, dementia supersedes them all combined. If you want to personalize it, let, maybe we'll go there here this morning. Let's take a risk because this is Ted. 70% of people in this room, if you live uh, above the age of 85, will develop dementia. 
95% of people over the age of 90, and everybody's going to live over 90 in this room because we're increasing life expectancy, will have dementia. So you will probably have dementia. Everybody probably will have dementia. This disease is projected to grow four times in the next 10 to 15 years. No other disease is expected to grow this rate. So this is a pandemic-level disease that's growing exponentially. And in Arizona, there's a 50 to 75% increase projected in the next 10 to 15 years. This will bankrupt our Social Security levels nationally and in our state, unless we do something about it. It's not that the disease is increasing, it's just that people that get this disease are increasing. So the baby boomer generation that's triple or quadruple the size will come into the range where they will start developing dementia. So when I talk to people nationally or I give um, advice to my patients, I was at a, a place last night and I was working with somebody and she had a shirt that said, getting old is not for sissies, right? Have you seen that shirt? And I said, Darn right. Yeah, you're totally right. We need to take mental preventative measures to help prevent us from developing this disease. There's a significant financial burden. Billions of dollars, trillions of dollars are spent in caregiving costs, healthcare costs, etc. For the business types here, if you took ExxonMobil, you took Walmart, you took their combined revenue each year, Dementia far exceeds that. Those are the top two largest grossing companies nationally. The personal toll is much more significant. Everybody in this room, and I don't even need a show of hands, has been personally impacted by dementia. I guarantee it. Because when I do talks and I've met tens of thousands of people, I haven't seen one person that hasn't. You tell me what other disease impacts people at such a wide breadth. And my mom was here today, and she had a special relationship with my grandmother. So when we think about these memories in my story, I think about the women that raised me in my life, the women that went to college, that were highly independent, that would have done anything to help prevent them from developing a disease. And I think, why did they not do something to prevent this disease? Because it took their life before they were dead. And that, to me, is the worst thing about this disease. It kills us before we die. I think, I'm not a psychologist or anything. <laughs> I just play one on TV. No, I think that that's your number one fear. If I could be Sigmund Freud for a second, I think that's your number one fear of being a burden to your family, of losing your independence, of losing your time, and being dead before you physically die. This should not happen. I had curly hair when I was young, I still do. This disease is incredibly accelerating throughout the nation and throughout the world. It's a pandemic level disease worldwide. Again, not to be competitive or anything, but when you compare it versus other diseases, dementia far supersedes any other disease combined. And to do something about it, we must understand what it is. And it's not just the people that are in their 80s or the people that are in their 90s that are old, old, quote unquote, that have wrinkled hands and wrinkled faces. What it is really is the people that are in your 60s. Some of the people here that are in your 60s or 70s that are developing this disease six to eight years in your brain before you can see any demonstrable symptomology. So I don't have to come to you today and I don't have to say, I need you to go exercise, right? Because you're already doing heart disease preventative exercise. You're already doing things to prevent heart disease. We just need to make those changes from a mental perspective to help prevent this. So when we think about this idea, this silver tsunami, these baby boomers coming in and increasing life expectancy, we're in a lot of trouble in our society. What can we do about it? If we do things, this is a very simple idea, if we do things that are new and novel to our brains, things that we've never done before, 
it releases a chemical in the brain. It binds neurons together. When you sleep at night, those neurons come together and they release a chemical organically called glutamate. What glutamate does is it floods the brain, the synaptic gaps in the brain, and it prevents the brain, the brain from engaging in that accelerated shrinkage, that accelerated shrinking that we talked about before, that accelerated atrophy. So simple idea, when you get in your 60s, you need to start doing new and novel things with your brain. And how much do you have to do it? Maybe one or two hours a week, not too much. And if you do that, it will help prevent this disease. It won't cure it. It won't totally prevent it. You can be a genetic risk for this disease, but this is a simple lifestyle change that you can make. And if you're younger, you can help your parents and grandparents make this change to help prevent this atrophy of the brain. Right? We don't have to tell you, I don't have to tell you to exercise. I don't have to tell you that eating too many desserts are bad. You know that. But this is one thing you can do mentally to help yourself. And it's an intergenerational thing. It's not just for older people. So novel learning leads, helps lead to this idea of a healthy brain. Whereas the brain is shrinking because people are not doing anything at all or like my grandma who did the New York Times crossword puzzle up to the point that she couldn't remember anybody around her in any of our names. Can you imagine that? That's a hard crossword puzzle. They do the things that they already know how to do. And they repeat those things. And they could be working and they could be, they said, I, Grandma's sharp because she remembers how to do those things she knew how to do? No. You, we always know the things that we know how to do. We have to learn new and novel things. That helps release glutamate. Everybody on board with that? Simple idea. Novel learning increases a chemical in your brain, prevents the atrophy of the brain. Simple idea. And easy to do. There's no product associated with this. There's no business associated with this idea. There's no proprietary thing on this. It's like saying that there's a proprietary thing on exercise. There's gyms, and you can go to the gyms, but you don't need to do anything. You don't need to buy anything. You just need to find new and novel things. Learn a foreign language. Learn a different topic. If you're a college student, bring your stuff to your grandparents or your parents if they're aging and help them understand through a conversation what you can do. These are simple ideas and things that you can do to bridge this intergenerational gap and help prevent the most disastrous disease that we have and will have for the next at least 100 years. So the three things that my grandmother valued the most is independence, not being a burden on your family. Have you heard that one before? Yeah, right? Time, having quality time with people and dignity. And dignity is a huge one, right? Because we want to live our lives with dignity. We are entitled to dignity at all ages. So I want you to now do something even more daring for me. I want you to close your eyes again. I want you to imagine that loved one that you had, that person that you had in your mind. I want you to imagine joining hands with them, bridging that gap with them, helping them through conversation, through reduced stigma, to reduce this disease through new and novel learning. And I remember the quote, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn in rage at the close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Thank you very much for your time and your attentiveness.